Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth and final uh, POMAC G5 Hackintosh film, ha Hackintosh film, Hackintosh build filming vlog. And as you can see, I've just finished recording the first part of this video, um, which is the little introduction. Um, I'm not sure if I've shown you shown you this, but this is basically, it is evolving, and I will go onto that little guy in a minute. But um, this is basically what we're, what we're rocking. Um, I do put the normal light on. Uh, it just does a little bit. It constantly changes the way I, I do stuff. I'm constantly searching for sort of different ways to do things. But these two guys, they're the cornerstones of decent looking video. Um, we've got the half brightness softbox and then the full brightness softbox bouncing off, off the light. Pr providing really nice natural sort of uh, light. EOS M. 22 mil lens. Um, what are we running at? ISO 100, f 2.0, and a 40th of a 40th of a second. We've got the lav mic plugged into that. That's a brilliant little thing. I'm really really pleased with uh, that purchase. And um, well, here we have. If I move this out of the way, I'm finished now, pretty much. This is our iPad, and um, you've never seen this before, guys. And uh, I've never shown it to you. <laughs> um, and I basically, I, I received it for next to nothing. It cost me 20 quid. It's a first generation iPad. Um, first generation Wi-Fi only, 32 gig. And I bought it for 20 pounds. I was going to flip a little bit of profit because they still sell for about 80, 90 pounds. Um, but I have just, I've fallen in love with it. It is so ridiculously handy it is an incredibly useful little tool to have um i have, i have been absolutely shocked at how how much i've enjoyed using this because this is a very very old tablet this this tablet's nearly 6 years old it's running a single core a4 chip 256 megabytes of ram is running ios 5 and um I was expecting to just go, ah, no, please get it away from me. Um, but I've just found myself picking it up and using it over over my phone or over a laptop so many times. Um, I've never been a big tablet guy. I've I I think I've owned a Nexus Seven in the past, which was basically there because I didn't have a powerful enough phone to run all the stuff um, that I would have wanted anyway. So it wasn't really a tablet per se. It was more a phone replacement. Um, for multimedia stuff, but this is a joy to use. It is an absolute joy to use. You saw me there. I had the notes app open, and it basically it's just sat there, and it, it I can read my script off it then basically. Um, before I was having to balance a MacBook Pro over there, and that would glare in my eyes for one. It would make me look really unnatural because I'm constantly shifting my focus from there to there. Being able to just type it up on here knock it down and then just look over memorize it then look back at the camera it's just for, for little things like that it is super super help, helpful it's not a powerhouse by any stretch of the imagination um i've i've done a metric shit ton of, of sort of modifying and stuff to get this thing nice and stable to the point uh, of where it's really actually usable for stuff like facebook twitter youtube films are incredible on it and yeah i've just I've, I'm keeping it now because it's just so so helpful. It's an incredibly handy little little thing to have around. But um, yeah. So that's uh, one more addition to my um. Uh, what do you call it? Filming setup, I guess. Awesome little thing. Absolutely awesome. Um, but anyway, what was I talking about? Yes, this is what I wanted to talk about. You've you've probably I mean, had your jaw wide open for the last. God knows how long, but um, yeah, this is our Power Mac G5 Hackintosh running OS 10, and you may be wondering how that is possible, seeing as I've just recorded the introduction for part four, which is the OS 10 install. Um, basically, after I recorded part three, I you saw me at the beginning of the last filming vlog taking parts out of. Um, 
the 2015 Hackintosh build, the graphics card, the SSD, parts that were requ required to make it function. So straight after part three, as I, know, I don't have a laptop at the moment that is capable of recording, record, I, I want to edit a nice quality video on, I had to get OS X and crack on and install OS X on this straight away. And um, so it may break your, um, I don't know what the word is, immersion, I guess. Um, but part four was a bit of a phony. Um, what you saw in part four was a bit of a simulation. Um, basically what I did was go through the exact process that I did when I actually installed it. So it's not it's not fake by any stretch. It goes through the process that I went through. It's just not, it wasn't for real, if you get me. I installed it on a, on a 80 gig hard drive and um, yeah. It gives me more time, it puts less pressure on, because when you're messing around with Hackintosh, it's not a simple process. And when you want to make a professional looking series, you want it to be seamless and stuff. So, in a way, it was probably good that I that I just cracked on straight after recording part 3 and got OS X installed, because then I got a base and a, an actual functioning computer to work off of. But, um, it's incredible, guys. You've seen part 5 by now, I haven't... I haven't even written the script really for, for part five yet. I I'm not sure, so it's a bit of a weird paradox um, going on here because you've seen part five. I haven't even recorded part four yet. Um, but yeah, it's incredible. The temperatures are awesome. The performance is absolutely ridiculous. It looks incredible. It is absolutely dead silent. Can't hear it. Cannot hear it. It's absolutely amazing. The power supply stays cool, and that is a massive win. Because I have no, you have no temperature temperature sensors down there, and these fans are running at five volts. They're two Galaxy Simon Six fans running at five volts, and they just do the job. They really do the job. I, I was expecting I may have to turn them up to seven volts or possibly even twelve volts, which would have not been fun. But five volts, it stays icy cold in in that enclosure. So I'm super super chuffed with that, um, and. Well, look at look at the temperatures we're idling, idling at. CPU is at twenty seven degrees Celsius, and the GPU is at twenty seven degrees Celsius. That is utterly ridiculous, and um, oh, it's just everything I expected and more. I am chuffed, over the moon, absolutely overjoyed with how this thing has turned out. It is absolutely perfect. It's the next day now, and um, this is our little uh, setup and uh, it's proving very very difficult to find a position to put the monitor in where the glare from door and the windows behind isn't absolutely unbearable um, fucking glossy displays man <laughs> they're just uh, it's a bad call it's a shame because it's such a oh, it's a fucking iMac so it looks absolutely gorgeous but it just MacBook Pro that I was recording um, yesterday. I'm not sure if I, I told you about that, but uh, for the basically like the preliminary bit, uh, getting the USB set up and stuff, Mac display, no worries. You can put it anywhere, and the the footage looks decent. But with this, you can see it just it just looks shit, frankly, and. Uh, I can't think of what I can do to rectify it, really. Um, oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I may... Because I don't think we're lending that much light off of these windows. The majority of it is coming from there and there. So, I could wait till it gets dark. Um, crank the ISO up, and then go from there. Um... But that's running the risk then of of the footage looking shit and hmm a bit of a dilemma. This is about as ghetto <laughs> as you can possibly get. But um yeah, welcome to my ghetto studio and it bloody works, guys. I'm telling you now. It's absolutely crazy the amount of glare. Look at that. It's brilliant. Absolutely perfect. No reflections whatsoever. Um, it's grey, it would have been nice if it was white, um, because then it would have acted almost as, as a softbox in a way, um, because it would have, um, dispersed the light, bounced it all over the place, but, 
fuck it. It's, it's still very, very light in here. So, um, ISO 400, F5.6 at a 30th of a second. And, um, yes, yeah, so this is pretty much the setup then, guys. I've got to figure out a way to uh, get the keyboard and the mouse connected because um, the USB hub on the, on the back of the iMac, the cable is too short to um, reach down there. So I'll just stick an extension cable in or something. And uh, then we're pretty much good to go. I fucking knew this part was going to be an utter twat to record. When I was uh, installing OS X for real, um, for whatever reason, I was getting an issue that I don't think anybody else has had. Um, like, well, not not anybody that's put it online anyway. Um, basic goes it goes to about 16 minutes remaining, and then in the log, um, it basically T spliced font failed creating descriptor for. Noto San Buhid and Noto San Hanunu. Um, I, pre I well, from what I can gather, there are two fonts for um, a different language, a language that I will never use. But um, it gets stuck there every time, and it gets stuck in a loop. It keeps on trying to go through the same process. Usually, if something non-critical on an OS X install fails. It tries it a few times, then goes, okay, this isn't working, and it times itself out, and then it moves on to the next thing. Um, for whatever reason, this just gets itself stuck in a loop. It gives us an, a different um, code after every single every single thing. What I thought they were originally was every single character for that font in that language. But I literally, when I was installing it the first time around, I was sat here for about three hours and it still didn't do anything so um i knew this was going to going too well but basically since that's been fucking up i've just uh basically been think thinking out and sort of figuring out how i'm going to record this video in a, an effective way because zoomed out with the camera just i may as well turn this off now it's wasting battery um basically zoomed out like that or sorry zoomed out like that it's too far out, I think, uh, to be able to focus on anyth anything. Being zoomed out that way is good f when you have something that's happening on the whole window. But for when I'm in disk utility or when I want to focus on on the time left in the installing in, in, in installing window, um, I think it needs to be zoomed in. So I would absolutely love at this moment in time to have two of these cameras um, so I can have a double to be, have it in two different locations like but um, basically it looks like I'm going to have to go through this process twice um, and that's before I have to get through this shitstorm I did so many things last time round I don't even know what fixed it last time round, that's the annoying thing so I don't know what I have to do so I'm in the exact same situation as I was last time and I honestly do not have the time to troubleshoot something um, for 12 hours when I've already got a, a working version of OS X on, on the SSD, but I need to make this video. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to have one um, run through that is basically going to be filmed in this spot with this amount of zoom, it's 28mm, and it's just going to be, I'm going to go through the whole process, so every shot th that requires this zoomed out thing, I can get it with this run through. Then I'm going to go through everything again, and I'm going to move the camera into different positions. So if I need to focus on the camera, clicking utilities, disk utility, then it's going to be zoomed in by there. And uh, if I need it so it's it's zoomed in on the installing on Macintosh HD, I can zoom it in there. And then in post, I can cut, I can use the zoomed out window shot run through as the base. And then for things that need focus, I can use the second run through to stitch the zoomed in, if, if that makes any sense to you. It's a lot of work, but um, otherwise it's just going to be a whole video of just looking at one position on the iMac. That's going to get very, very boring, and it's not going to get the point across very well. But I need to fix this. I'm like, fuck, I can't remember what I did last time to fix it. USB stick has just shat itself and doesn't boot now, for some reason. For literally no reason. I managed to figure out what the other issue was. 
thought, okay, set the camera up, started recording, clicked the power button, okie dokie, right, we're going to mash F12 here now, just as we have done the last 20 times, which booted in the USB stick perfectly, nothing has changed, literally nothing, boots into the USB stick, goes like that, and then bang, we're in the Intel bootloader. Why? Fucking why, this... Now this, guys, this is the warning that I feel obliged to give everyone uh, when it comes to hacking Toshin, because literally there's a shitstorm around every corner and sometimes it happens for no logical reason. People who are in interested and are into computers and are savvy when it comes to tech, they have tend to have very logical brains stuff always goes wrong for a reason and that's the whole thing of troubleshooting um, and it's all very logical and if you have a logical brain then you tend to be good with technology and computers Hackintoshin it just turns all that on its head because stuff happens for no reason it, uh, some, it can spin out uh, just fucking literally for no reason whatsoever and it drives you insane. It absolutely drives you insane. And this isn't even for real. This is all fake for a video, essentially. It's not fake, but it's a reproduction. But it still does my head in. And I see people commenting on, on videos and stuff saying, um, I've never used a Mac before. I'm not very good at computers, um, but I, I want to use OS X for photo editing and stuff. Hackintosh isn't going to be good for them because unless you really have your head screwed on and you really know what you're doing, um, it's very, very difficult at times. Sometimes, like last year, I went through the process and literally did not hit a single hiccup. This time round, with an almost identical platform, it's the exact same chipset, the HAT1 chipset, the only difference is it's the Micro ATX version. It's still a supported CPU, I've got supported RAM, I've got a fully supported graphics card, everything is the same, but for some reason, it just causes me more issues. I'm even using the same fucking USB stick, and it just, it just sends you absolutely mental, guys. So, take it again as a massive warning, if you intend on hackintoshing, and you intend on investing a lot of money into hackintoshing, and into a hackintosh, then be 100% sure that you have the patience and the tolerance to get it working. Now that's some real progress, guys. It's now probably about 90 minutes since I last spoke to you. As you can see, L cap up on the G5. Um, the camera has been sat in the same position the whole time, as I said earlier. Just um, basically just going through the whole process sort of like free flowing. So um, I can almost use that as like a background. And then it's almost out of battery now. So I'm going to put it on charge. Um, then I'm going to come back down. And I'm going to start recording the other bits. So I'm going to go through the process again, essentially. Um, by the way, the, the get it, put in a new uh, copy of LCAP on the USB stick fixed that whole font thing it's just weird the, it seems like the they have a certain number of reboots before they just crap out on you but anyway um yeah i'm gonna go through the process again but this time i'm gonna move the camera around and focus on various bits so we're gonna have the background bit of um just the main of, of the whole screen like where it is now going through the whole, the whole process and then it's gonna cut away as i do stuff so if I'm clicking something, it's going to go there, there, and then it's going to pan over to the window, which is opened and stuff like that. And then I've got to record um, basically little clips because you don't see um, the, the the power button isn't in the same frame as, as the monitor, obviously. So you can't physically see when I press the power button. So what I'm going to do is um, have a little uh, picture in picture, probably. It's a little bit risky, it may look a bit shit, but I may as well just record the footage anyway of me simply clicking the power button. Um, so then the viewer then can put, okay, he's clicked it there, and then we can start the, 
the the timer from there, like from power button to desktop. Otherwise, you don't see me press the power button. And then obviously, um, pulling out and plugging in the USB stick has to be recorded as well. But um, yeah, well that's pretty much it. And the good thing about this blanket is we are not affected by the light changing. Um, it's now ten past four, and as you can see, it's really started to get dark outside now. Um, and if I didn't have that blanket up from from the first second, basically, the footage would look quite weird. You could tell it was getting darker because even if if you're working with natural light, even um, even if you adjust the ISO and your shutter speed and the aperture uh, to compensate for the light changes, you're never going to get it looking perfect. You're never going to look at, get the footage looking 100% consistent. You're always going to be able to tell um, the changes in light. So if you start from this position in the first place, then you can just set your ISO, set your shutter speed, set your aperture, and you don't have to worry about it getting dark because the only light that you're sucking in is the light from the softbox and that light there. So daylight doesn't come into it, which is really, really good. And um, it's probably going to make this uh, video look a little bit better than um, I perhaps thought it would have. I'm looking at this now, and that is absolutely stunning. That is a stunning display, but it just doesn't... Recording screens is never going to be the most beautiful thing um, to put into a video, but um, but it looks absolutely incredible in person. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm going to knock this onto charge now, and uh, I'll meet you down here when we start recording the last few bits, and then it's simply a case of smacking it into a uh, final cut, doing the voiceover work, stitching it together, and uh, whacking it up on YouTube. Well, guys, um, I royally failed. Um, I can't even remember the last clip I recorded for this filming vlog. But um, I basically, I promised on Twitter that um, part four was coming Wednesday 9th and then part five Wednesday the 15th, 16th. Um, but I've just been very, 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 very busy and someone's ringing me. Be right back. Yeah, uh, as I was saying, I promised to get it Wednesday 9th and then Wednesday the 16th passed me by, um, couldn't get the video out in time, so I'm just recording the last couple of clips here now. And um, here we are, I've still got to do uh, colour correction on a load of the clips. Um, it's now quarter past eight, um, but, oh, nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's looking alright, guys. Um, it's always hard to stitch these videos together, these OS ten install videos, because it's hard to fill them out, almost, because... I, it's very difficult to stop it from looking like a tutorial, um, and add into that as well the the, the fact that the, the shots I've got it. You've got to figure out various ways, like for ex for example, um, changing the angle so you get a close up shot. I I think I went over this. I seem to remember talking about this earlier. It's just um, th this video was quite challenging. I wasn't expecting it to be, but um, it's a it's not difficult to record, you can record anything at the end of the day, but it was difficult to record and get looking decent. But I am really, really happy with how, how the clips have turned out. You can probably tell us looking a little bit green, a little bit yellow. So um, I'll definitely colour correct a load of these before. But that's another thing. When you colour correct in, the white balance on the screen, the, well, the colour of the screen is always way different to the colour of... Um, the amb the ambient color, uh, essentially. So if you knock, like for example, if I made that look really really nice, forget the monitor was on, made the back of that wall true to life, which is white, then we'd end up with a really blown out screen and the color temperature would be off. So it's going to be quite challenging to go through this, but um yeah, the the the, the couple of shots I've recorded here have just been for um the the outro basically. Um, just sort of to close the book almost. And yeah, these things are absolutely awesome. 99p off eBay. They're like little fairy lights. Um, I bought them as a, a Christmas decoration. But for, like, um, I can't remember what channel it is now. Um, I've noticed that it's, oh my god, I can't, I forgot his name. Um, uh, I'll get back to you. I'll put it in the editing or something. But um, you notice a lot of their videos, they have really, really shallow depth of field, and then they have lights on the on the, on the background. 
Obviously, I, I can't do that because there's a wall behind me, so I can't go for the depth of field thing, but it's really, really nice, the kind of light they give off, because they're little little pinches of, of warm light. Um, like, for example, I've got the light on there. It gives the whole, the whole shot a warm tone, but it doesn't give... It doesn't light the subject up in that way, if you get me. So... These fairy lights are really great. You can see there's a little bit of warm light there. It just casts a shadow, and it just it, it brings more dimension to the shot, I think. Um, but yeah, I'm going to crack on with the editing now um, and try and get it up before 10 o'clock, if possible. Right then, everyone. It is now sometime next week. It's now a Friday. I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly when I recorded the last clip. But as you can see, like Christmas decorations are up now. And, um, well, basically, I'm still recording this, which is a bit annoying. Um, but this video is going to be out this weekend, Sunday, um, if all goes to plan. Just recording the script bit. Um, then I'm going to uh, record the screencasts of um, the benchmarks. So Geekbench, Cinebench, Black Magic Disk Speed Test, then jump into Windows, do Tomb Raider GTA 5 and uh, Bioshock Infinite. I think that's the three games I'm going to do. I chose the three games because... I feel like they're good, well-balanced, uh, properly optimized games. Like, I could pick um, F1 2015 or Far Cry 4 or even Fallout 4 to a certain extent, and I don't think it would really be a proper representation of what the computer can do because they're all either shit ports of the console version or they're just not very well optimized full stop. So those three games, I think, I think, are very, very. Well, Tomb Raider is it's a very GPU bound game, so you can really see what the, what the 660 is kind of capable of. Um, it's pretty much a benchmark Tomb Raider. It's that well optimized um, for GPUs on on PC. That is pretty much the benchmark. Bioshock Infinite. I, I ran through that a few months ago on on the 2015 Hackintosh build of the i3, and thought it was a pretty pretty well optimized game. Um, and it looks very pretty, so I'll just knock that in there, and then GTA 5, superb um, game, especially with, with the i5 in there. Um, it does struggle on dual-core systems, but it's not meant to run on dual-core systems, so that's understandable. But, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. This is basically just the sort of intro bit saying, uh, this is pretty much it, guys, and then the outro bit saying thank you and... Uh, all that sort of stuff, because the support I have got over this series has just been amazing, absolutely amazing. And um, what I've also got to do is now write up a Tony Mac X86 thread um, to put on there, because for one, I think it'll, it'll increase the traffic to the videos, and vice versa, it'll, it'll increase the traffic to, to the forum. So um, I think it's a good thing to do, and people have been asking questions on various things, and if I just write it up, for everyone to see, then it's going to be a lot easier to access. It's now about, well, um, since the last clip, which is just before Christmas, it's now January 6th, 2016, so that is quite the time jump. But um, I did record a, a closing clip um, after the last clip you just saw um, a couple of weeks ago, but for whatever reason, I, I, I've, I've had issues with this GoPro from day one. Once the memory card fills up a bit, it begins to struggle. You may have seen some artifact in the, in the last couple of clips, but once it gets full, it just seems to choke, and then it just doesn't 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 want to play play ball. So um, I'm recording this now, basically to say that part five is up. Um, Merry Christmas video is up. Everything is up. Christmas decorations are down. It's this is such a massive massive jump in time. But, um, yeah, it's all up, and it's absolutely crazy. Part 1 has just hit 3,000 views, and um, it's doing better than I expected, so it's obviously attracting a fair amount of attention from um, people outside of uh, outside of the subscriber base. But, um, yeah, I, I, all I can say is thank you. I said this at the end of Part 5 and in the Merry Christmas video. Thank you for all the support. It's been absolutely incredible. Um... I may as well take this time now to just say a couple of things. Oh, by the way, I I still haven't written up the Tony Mac X86 write-up. I'm doing that tomorrow. Um, I'm also taking all the pictures and stuff and and getting that all sorted because I know a lot of people are, are waiting for it. 
Um, but yeah, I, f a lot has happened since the last time um, you saw me. I basically, I've got a car, for one. I passed my test absolutely ages ago. Um, never ended up buying a car because I just couldn't afford it and I didn't really need it. But um, I'm starting a new job on Monday. Um, hence why a lot more money is going to be coming in. So I'm going to be doing the whole repair thing on top of having um, a very, very decently paid job as well. So it's all looking really, really good at the moment. I'm just not 100% sure what this is going to mean for the YouTube thing. I did say if you watched the Merry Christmas video, which got a very, very low view count for some reason. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe, I think it happens every year. People are just doing Christmassy stuff at that point, so they, they, they're not interested in catching up in, in with their sub boxes but um basically a second channel i want to get a lot more vlogs up as you can see i've got a new channel out for the last good while since i since i did did the new redesign um they both shared the exact same style and it just doesn't um there's, there's, there was no separation you couldn't tell one from one unless you clicked on the channel and you saw the little two so what I basically did was literally just in, invert the colours. So um, you can see in the channels um, there, you can see that um, it's, it's basically opposite. So it still looks the same, it's still got the same style, but it's just inverted colours. So it's, it's pretty simple, but it just allows you to, to tell the difference between the two channels. But yeah, I'm hopefully going to be picking up a, a, a very nice little vlogging camera. Um, to use on this second channel very soon. As good as this little GoPro is, it's not that great. Um, the video quality and it's a nightmare to to know because of the wide wide um, field of view. You're you're always further out than you expect. So I'm going to be picking up a, a decent little camera for, vlog for vlogging. I want to ramp up vlogging on this channel just to see where it takes me. It's a, it's a bit experimental because I'm not sure how well it's going to do. Um, but we do have oh wow. We have 502 subscribers on this channel now, that's crazy. For the number of videos and, and how infrequently infre I've been uploading here, that's that's very impressive. But, um, yeah, the main channel, it's just going to be big projects. Um, I said, I've said multiple times now, um, since the summer, it's not going to be as frequent as it has been in the last four years. Um, but hopefully the stuff I do upload will be, will be proper, nice quality. Um... Uh, it, the, the subscribers, uh, the, I was I was pretty upset. I, I wouldn't say upset, um, but a lot of people after part five went up of the G five build, like kind of saw it coming. Um, a number of people just hit that unsubscribe button. That is all they cared about, and um, uh, it's a bit of a kick in the teeth because I've always been so proud of the subscriber base I have here. It's awesome. And 99.9% .9 of you are absolutely incredible people. Um, but it was just a little bit annoying to see so many people dash to the door as soon as that was uploaded. But well, what can you do? It's, it's, it's no, no, no big deal, really. But um, yeah, I'm not really sure what else I can say, guys. Um, new job. Lots of vlogs on the second channel. Um, a lot more money coming in, so hopefully that means more projects, more money I can put into projects for this channel. And, uh, yeah. So, thank you for watching these filming vlogs. If you've reached to the end, leave a comment down below, because I, I, I'm just I'm looking through these clips I've got here now, and this is going to be an uh, absolutely monstrous um, vlog. So if you've got to the end, uh, click a comment down below, and... Um, I'll know who the hardcore guys are then. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed. As usual, this will be a vlog in some shape or form. And as always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.